Good morning, everybody, again. Fantastic. I think uh, most parents are back now. So, as I uh, mentioned earlier on, we're really, really blessed this morning um, to have um, Aaron with us, who, who leads um, Bridge Church in Partington. Uh, and Aaron is so passionate um, about sharing the gospel and about sharing faith. Um, so he's going to come and, and talk to us this morning. As I mentioned, it's going to be interactive as well. So he's going to get us doing a part of it. Um, and I think it would just be really, really good. I really believe that we're going to receive something this morning just in terms of equipping and encouragement um, and sharing our faith just in a really practical way in our day-to-day -day lives. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Sharing our faith, sharing our life um, with others. Um, I, I think, really believe he's going to help us in that. So I'll just pray for him um, just before we, um, we start together. Thank you, Lord God, so much for Aaron. Thank you for his heart for you, his heart for the gospel, Lord God. And I thank you for, for what he has to share with us today, Lord God. And we just pray that um, we would have ears to hear, Lord God, that we would be encouraged, we would be equipped in sharing our faith and sharing the gospel, the good news uh, with those that are in our lives. We thank you for, for every person that you've placed in our life, Father God. Um, and that uh, you're going to equip us and help us. And um, we thank you for um, Aaron supporting and um, being a part of that and equipping us this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Over to you. Thank you, James. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. I, I was saying to Louise, you come into a church like this, I don't know anyone, but just immediately felt at home. And if that's not just proof of God and that his presence is here, I don't know what is. So I'll start by sharing my story. It is going to be practical. At some point, I need to find a way over there so I can draw something. I haven't worked that out yet, but God's on it. So I am, um, my name is Aaron. I grew up in a, an atheist home, really. Um, my father's very confidently against God, and so was I, really. Um, up until university, I did a maths degree. Very confident in my understanding of how the world works to the extent that I wouldn't really be told otherwise. And the kind of thing I do now where I might approach someone on the street and offer to pray, I probably would have been quite rude <laughs> against that. Um, but I met my now wife, Louise, who I can't see, but she is here in the building somewhere. She's waving at me. Um, and she told me who Jesus is and what that means for me. And I didn't believe her. And then um, I received prayer because I had a back problem. And instantly it was fixed in the name of Jesus. And I still didn't believe. I saw someone's knee get healed. And I still didn't believe. And I'm very stubborn. And God knows what each of us needs to kind of be restored to him, right? And we're all different. And the logic or whatever for me was a bit of a barrier. And he logically showed me Someone prayed in Jesus' name, something impossible happened. Someone prayed in Jesus' name, something impossible happened. And because I still wouldn't believe, I struggled to sleep because there was this clash with my confident understanding of reality that was being challenged in a way that I couldn't explain except to admit that maybe it's right, but I really didn't want to. And I know that sounds, I know that sounds bad. I reluctantly acknowledged, God, you must be real, but I didn't live for him. I don't know if that's anyone else's story here. There was a gap between understanding Jesus is my savior and then actually making him my king where I chose to obey him. And that came when I was reading the book of James, James 2, and it says, uh, you believe in God, good. So do the demons, though they can't stand in his presence. And I had this horrible realization that knowing God is real might not be enough for me to be with him in heaven because demons know he's real too according to the bible and i suppose the enemy does too and through that i was challenged to take this step where actually i need to live for you god not just follow you all right so that's a little bit about me what we're going to do today i normally would have longer we're going to fly through it so bear with me there's four w's um it's something we would actually use with a new believer relatively early on it's why do we share our faith who do we share with? What do we share? And then when are you going to do it? It's very, very, very simple. So we'll start with the why. Jesus says in Matthew 28, at the very end of, the, of that first gospel, go and make disciples of all nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
and teach them to obey all I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. So I would say, we're flying through this, for the why, Jesus says so. We happy with that? Going as quick as we can. Okay, good. So the next thing, we're going to get practical now. What are some barriers to sharing our faith? So I don't know if we want to do this maybe in rows or twos or threes. Just probably one minute, and then we're going to feed back. So as an example, a barrier to me sharing my faith sometimes... um, I used to do some door knocking stuff when I was being taught how to share. And my most despised type of complex would be one where you had to press a buzzer. You can't even get into the building. So I'd have to press a buzzer and then try and persuade someone over the buzzer to let me in so I could tell them about Jesus. And I hated it to the extent that I'd want to skip that house if it was a buzzer. So maybe just take one minute, going as fast as we can, uh, just where you're sat, I think, and then feed back to me what are some things that stop us from sharing with others. Right, I reckon that's close to a minute. Um, Anyone want to feed back, just like single words or slightly longer, what are some things that stop us from sharing? Rejection, Rejection, excellent. Yeah, anything else? Awkwardness. Yes. Brilliant. It's like what the aftermath might be. Yeah. Anything else? What to say. What to say. It's excellent. Yeah. I'll be honest. So one for me a lot of the time is apathy. It's like, frankly, I just don't want to on the day. Um, sometimes I'll get the nudge. Like I say, I'm in the shops or something and I feel like God's pointing me at someone but they've got bags in their hands or they've got headphones in or whatever it is. And I just don't want to. So, oh, I don't know if that's from God. I need a confirmation. And, and you miss it. And thank you, God, that you are gracious and you give us extra opportunities and you're patient with us. So I think what to share is a really big one. What about um, who we're meant to share with? Or in English, I think um, politeness. I would almost say that's a barrier, like we don't want to offend someone or if they're carrying the bags, they look heavy, let's not interrupt their day to give them eternity because their hands might get heavy or whatever it is. You sit down and think about it and it gets more and more silly, doesn't it? But affecting the relationship is a big one as well. That's really good. So we know a God who answers prayer, right? And this is important and we do want to share. Um... In smaller groups, again, let's just spend a minute and we're going to pray about some of these barriers. God, would you help me to overcome my fear? Would you help me to overcome indifference? Would you help us to find the right opportunities? And would you teach me what to say? Some, you know, just something like that in your groups and then we're going to get even more practical after that. This is good. Amen, I think. Close enough. That's excellent. So, this next step. So, the first step, why do we share? And I hope we all believe um, the gospel is the best thing we can share. It's the most important thing we can offer someone is Jesus and life with him for eternity. So, the next step, who can we share with? Right, really simple. I feel like Jesus' heart is for everyone to hear the gospel. But even on a smaller scale than that, there are people in each of our lives here who will not be here on a Sunday, no matter what whoever is speaking in this place does. Right, so James, if he's speaking, he can't reach your grandparents, your neighbours, your friend who works on a Sunday morning. We need the word of God, the gospel, to reach further than the stage... And that's where we come in. There are people that only we can reach, where God has placed us in a certain place or a time for a reason, because he's trusting us to be his ambassador. Right? So it says in 2 Corinthians 5 that we are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Praise God. And he goes on to say, we are also Christ's ambassadors, as though he were making his appeal through us. 
He doesn't need us, but he chooses to use us to share, and it is a privilege. So this next step, really, really simple. Um, ideally, we'd have pen and paper, but I think we can simplify it down. We want to spend a little bit of time and just think of maybe two names. And if we can do it in pairs or threes, that's fine. And a really, really simple prayer. So my brother, Ben, uh, doesn't know God. Part of the background I'm from is I'm the only believer in my family currently. By the grace of God, that would change. And a simple prayer we could pray for Ben would be, God, would you open Ben's ears and his heart to hear and understand and receive the gospel? And would you open my mouth at the right time to share when you ask me to? Yeah, so it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, but it does come with the scary, make me do something, God, because he keeps his promises. So if we each could think of a name or a couple of names, and then we're just going to pray for them for an opportunity to tell them who Jesus is. Has, um, has everyone just about had a chance to pray? Or do we need a little bit longer? Good. I think so. some of this, because we're going so fast, um, I will draw. Some of these things have visual aids, but I, the paper's over there. I still haven't worked it out. I'll maybe draw some of the stuff up at the end, and you can take a picture if you like. But it's, it's not more complicated than a spider diagram. You know, old school, when you're back here in your school, with your name in the middle, and then who are some people? That you know, and it might be some people break it down into categories, so your workplace, your street, your family, whatever it is, just to give, just kind of for your head just to work out, God, who from the people I know do you want me to communicate with this week or try and reach out to? And even just a simple offer of prayer, we find it's just so effective at the moment, even uh, people who don't believe. I think everyone understands that prayer is kind. I don't know if that makes sense. Even if they reject it, it does something. It does something. And God loves when we obey. There's a scripture, John 17. Jesus has been praying for his disciples um, to speak into his father. And he comes to the end of the chapter and he says, my prayer is not just for them alone, so his disciples or us, but also for all who will come to believe in me through their message. So an encouragement, Jesus prays for us. He prays for the people that don't know him yet. We aren't responsible for someone entering the kingdom of God. We can't do that, right? It's death to life. Only God can do that. What we can do is take the tiny step of obedience when, this, when the nudge comes. Can I pray for you, neighbor? Can I pray for you, brother? Can I share why I'm praying for you? Does that make sense? So... I'm going to um, do the third one now, which is what can we share? And we've been doing it, step one, the easiest bit. And I've never deviated from this. I've never seen a reason to. And God shows up every time is, is prayer. You see a need with someone on your street who's, whatever it is, car won't start, kids are acting up, they're locked out. You know, these are just all things I've seen on my street and it's not big. And can I pray for you? Even can I help you and then can I pray for you? Just be kind. If they say yes to prayer, if they say no to prayer, find it doesn't really matter. The next step afterwards is, have you ever heard the gospel before? So people call, call it a bridge question. And there's been various ones down the years. I find simple and truthful. We don't need to complicate it more than that. We used to say, um, do you feel like you're near or far from God or... Do you know Jesus? Or whatever it is we just ask, has anyone ever shared the gospel with you? And they might tell you that it's music. That's quite a common one you hear. Or they simply won't know it at all. And then, please, can I show you the gospel? There's a number of different ways we can do this. Uh, the tool I prefer to use is the three circles, so I think it might be time. Um, I'm going to try and draw it over there. I don't know how we'll do this with the chairs, but... Just turn around, we'll sit at a funny angle. We pray for all of your necks. Probably sat wonky. Yeah, that'd be great. I need to temper this. I'm left-handed, 
and it's very hard to read what I do up close. So you might want to come and have a look at it afterwards. So very simple. The world we live in is broken. You turn on the TV and you see war and you see famine. You see people not treating each other very well. There's hunger, there's misery, and there is pain, right? In the beginning, when God made the world, it was perfect. We were in relationship with one another and with him, and there was no pain, there was no misery, there was no death. But we turned our back on God and said, I'm going to live for myself or I. I don't need you, God. Now, the Bible has a word, sin. But the meaning of the word sin is that we have chosen to turn away from God and say, I'm in charge, not you. And in our own way, whether we know him or not, we're all trying to do something to deal with the brokenness we experience. It might be being a good person, I'm going to give to charity. It might be I'm going to go to mosque five times a day. I'm going to go to church on a Sunday, right? Some try less well thought of things in culture, drink and drugs, trying to get rich, have a perfect career. And the reason these things are squiggly is partly my handwriting, but also think of them like bungee cords. We are stuck here on our own. We are separated from God. We have no ability to fix the mess we're in on our own. But God loves us so much that he made a way in the form of his son, Jesus, who came down to earth, the third circle. And he lived a life free from sin. And he taught us how we should treat one another. So he fed the hungry. He healed the sick. And he even raised the dead. And he allowed himself to be killed on the cross. And a question I like to ask is, do you know what happened to us when he died on the cross? Every bad thing we've ever done or will ever do, the things no one knows about but you, God sees it all and he still chose to go to the cross so that he could pay the penalty for your sin. Because he is God, he rose again three days later. And the Bible tells us that if we will turn from the life we've lived for ourselves, there's a word repent, but it actually just means turn back and face God. If we will turn and face God and make him our king, then we receive his forgiveness and we're made new, as it says in that Corinthians passage. But also, the void, the thing we've been trying to fill, that thing we know in our gut is wrong our whole lives, that's because we've been missing God's Holy Spirit and he comes and fills us. And we're restored to the Father. Then there are three questions that I like to ask. So I'll draw a little stick man here. I'll explain that why if someone comes and asks me later. Three questions. Number one, sorry, James, how's the lactic acid going here? But <laughs> where are you in the picture? And the reason we draw this is to stop people saying they're in the middle, which is like they haven't listened or they're trying to wind us up. Do you feel like you're here with God or do you feel like you're separated from him? So this Tuesday in the cafe where I work, we have a volunteer who's been there a long time. And he saw a picture of this on my computer and asked me what it was. So I showed him and I asked him, like, basically, do you know what the gospel is? And he had no idea. And he's, you know, he's been in a Christian organization for years. So I showed him and I asked him, where do you feel like you are? And he said, I guess I'm here. And then the second question, where would you like to be? Yeah, please. Excellent. Look at that. Adult handwriting instead of mine. We're improving. So first question, where are you? Do you and that, by that really we're asking, do you feel like you are with God or not? And if they say they are with God, there's an opportunity to ask them, so have you done this? You've turned from your sin and you've made Jesus your king. Right? Because depending who you ask, different faith backgrounds or may have not understood what you said. And if they say anything that doesn't include this, so actually you're here because you can't be with God unless you've made Jesus your king and turned from your sin. Second question, where would you like to be? And a lot of people will say here. And it's only because no one's asked them and they've not seen it before. So then the final question, what's stopping you right now from doing this? 
and you could lead them in a very simple prayer, like, God, I am sorry that I've chosen to live apart from you, with my back to you. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. From now on, I want to live for you. Will you be my king? And you'd be amazed how often people will answer the way we'd love them to, to all three of these questions at the moment. I feel like in Manchester, in Withenshaw, something about the church is working together, something about how you've all prayed and sowed, and it feels like the soil is good from that scripture in Mark, where there's the seed that lands on the, on the rocks, on the path, gets choked. I feel like there's a lot of good soil at the moment, and the thing stopping us from seeing people come to know Jesus is they just need to be told. So I appreciate we're doing our best here. I don't know if we have pens and papers for people. We do. So we are going to practice the gospel. I would recommend this in a pair. Uh, The reason I wanted one we could draw. So again, this is just a tool for the gospel. If you have your own method that you already know, verbal, there's one called Four Points, The Two Kingdoms, which I think is fantastic, but it's hard to draw. Um, Please use that. If you've never shared the gospel before, or you're not confident at it, this is a really simple one you can practice. The first time I ever shared this was with a friend of mine, Jinesh, who's from a Hindu background family. And I was in a pub um, having a beer with him, and I basically said, my church has given me something I need to practice. Can I show you? And then I shared the gospel with him. Borderline deceitful, but I was able to share. We won't share our faith with people if we're not confident in what underpins it, in what the gospel is, in why we're Christians, and practicing the gospel, hearing the gospel, reading our Bibles, right? Everything that God asks us to do grows our confidence. But if we still think, I don't know what to say, something like a simple gospel tool could help you get over that hump. So we're going to practice it now. If anyone doesn't have a pair, um, let me know and I'll come sit with you. If, um, if you're still sharing, please keep sharing. I uh, was just um, a couple of testimonies to finish. I know people who have been Christians a long, long time, and they never shared their faith. And we've done an exercise like this, where they've written down their names. It's now on the floor, the picture of the spider diagram. And we ask, in terms of the what are you going to do, when are you going to share, you to commit to praying for the people God's put on your heart to write down every day. So they have a little card with the names on, and they just stuck it on their bathroom mirror. Some put it in their Bible, just so you see it every day. Pray for them every day, pray for them every day. And inside a week or two, they've all heard the gospel. I think one of them had come to faith, and they had to make new names, and they had to make new names. And this stuff works. If we pray earnestly to God, because we can't do it ourselves, please help. He will. So at the start of lockdown, Louise, my wife, um, she felt stirred to get in touch with a friend of hers, Susan, who she shared the gospel with a long time before that, wasn't interested at the time. She obeyed the nudge from God, and that day or the day before, Susan had given her life to God and was basically praying to him, can you send me someone because I don't know what I'm meant to do now? Louise rings her up starts to show her some really simple tools for how she can pray for people, how she can share her faith. Last we heard, she leads a church that was approaching something like 100 people. We don't actually, we don't, we've never seen it, so it's terrifying because she doesn't live in Manchester and we're having to trust that God will do a better job of looking after her than we could, which is true. But in my flesh, I hate it. But we pray for her and then someone in our church who separated from her partner. Um, It took her a little longer to start to share her faith, but she shared with her ex. And at the time, it seemed like he made some kind of response. There's been some difficulties since then, but it's just, this works. The gospel works. It's not none of its power. It's the reason I'm here. It's the reason this feels like it could be home to me the first time I've come, because the spirit of God is here and in all of you. It's the reason you can go across the world, right? And it just feels the same. Because God is real. He's lost none of his power. He's active. 
there's so many more stories I could share with you, so maybe come and have a chat with me. We'd also love to pray with anyone who really has a desperation to see specific people or a people group or a place for God to break through. So just come and grab me at the end. I just want to encourage you, if you've made that decision to make Jesus your king, you have him with you, and he is the one that brings people home. So just just go for it and do it together. Make fun of each other. I've had people make fun of me on the street. That was terrible, Aaron, when I've tried to pray for someone. Um, I've seen people share the gospel wrong, and I've wanted to correct it in my flesh because they haven't mentioned repentance or something. And the person's weeping that's been shared with, and it's like, thank God you're in charge, not me, because I would have ruined it somehow. So be encouraged, and thank you for having me as well, because it's